Kare Shalom, welcome to our watercolor journey. Today we are doing a loose atmospheric landscape. The materials used are listed in the description below. On the palette, we have Prussian blue, a purple premix of Prussian blue and alizarin crimson, alizarin crimson, Venetian red, and a black gray premix of Prussian blue and Venetian red. Color alternatives are listed below. The Fabriano paper is taped to a board which is lying flat on the table. The flat board helps to contain the spread of the paint and allows you to control where the paint would go on the paper. Heinrich uses the Princeton one inch mop to wet the entire paper. He starts by adding some Prussian blue to the sky area with a Princeton Heritage number no. 10 round. The paint has a fairly strong consistency. He's working wet on wet, so he wants to have enough paint to work with. He adds a touch of the purple premix to darken the area a little bit and then adds a bit of alizarin crimson to create a softer purple. He spreads the paint gently into the moisture on the paper to create soft edges. He leaves plenty of white space that will resemble clouds in the sky. The patch of blue will contrast nicely with the foreground later on. He adds some of the purple mix to the horizon and then warms it up with a bit of Venetian red to form the first layer of the mountain range in the background. Heinrich uses the dark grey-black mix to begin defining the terrain. Because he is working on very wet paper, the paint disperses beautifully to create soft and hard edges. Although he uses a very strong mix of the Venetian, it will soften greatly when he mixes it with the moisture on the paper. Here he starts to add some faint trees in the background. These trees are not defined at all so they will recede once the paper is dry and help to create distance. He contrasts the warmer Venetian with a cooler grey mix to create definition. The darker trees recede while the warmer ones will come a bit forward. This helps to create perspective and depth. Remember that watercolors dry back quite significantly, so don't be afraid to use strong pigments here. He adds a few splatters with a grey mix. Because the paper is very wet, these splatters will diffuse nicely to form soft textures. He uses a bit of water to spread some of the spots in the sky area. These will help to give more definition and texture to the clouds. He continues to define the terrain by using the different colors on the palette. He uses the same colors as in the sky to bring harmony. The closer he gets to the foreground, the darker and more concentrated the colors are. By placing darker colors in the front, the lighter colors on the horizon will recede even more to enhance the perception of distance. This painting is done in the vignette style. In other words, you don't paint all the way to the edges. In this case, he leaves the bottom left and the top right untouched. This will bring focus to the painted area and it will balance nicely with the brighter top left and the darker bottom right. He lifts the board to help the paint flow, but the paper is not wet enough anymore. 
so he uses a spray bottle to gently wet the paint again. Be very careful when you use a spray bottle. It can add too much water, which can cause your paint to flow too much. After spraying, he lifts and tilts the board again to allow the paints to flow into each other. This technique helps to create the soft, misty look in the distance. Notice how he guides the dark pool of paint in the middle. By gently rolling the board in all directions, you can control the paint a little bit and create amazing effects. Sometimes, however, you will find that the paper buckles when it's so wet. Then the paint pools in one place and it just won't move enough. Don't stress. You can use a dry brush or a paper towel and gently lift out the excess paint. If you do the lifting out with discretion, you can also create interesting textures. To give even more texture, Heinrich uses some salt. The paper is still quite wet, but the pigment is not too strong anymore. He spreads the salt deliberately to cover a specific area. The salt will react with the pigment and the water to create lighter spots, which will add beautiful textures to the painting. Allow the painting to dry thoroughly. Heinrich now works wet on dry, in other words, he paints onto the dry surface. He uses some of the purple to define the hills in the background. He uses the Kum memory point number 4 round for this. He adds a touch of the water to spread the paint and to create a soft edge at the bottom. The hard edge at the top separates the hill from the soft edged hill behind it. He still uses the same colors as he used in the sky to tie the sky and the mountains together. He continues to wet the brush and to gently spread the paint to create light and dark contrasts. Here he lightens the grey mix by adding a bit of water. He uses that and some of the purple to make a more distinct horizon line. He adds a touch of Venetian red to warm the shadow colour a bit and use that to define the terrain. He makes a few dots and lines to create an indistinct tree just off center in the background. He keeps adding more bushes 
as he moves forward. Notice that the closer he gets to the foreground, the darker and larger the bushes become. He varies between the dark blues and the Venetian red to define the ridge line using the patterns created by the salt to guide him. He loads the brush with a good amount of the purple and adds some splatters to the foreground for texture. The paper is completely dry, so the splatters stay put. He wants to balance the painting, so he adds a tree in the foreground. The composition is fairly minimalistic, so the foreground tree should be distinct but not overwhelming. He uses the dark mix to draw the main branches. The Kum brush is a synthetic brush with a nice snap. It holds a decent amount of water, so it is ideal for this type of drawing. Here he switches to the Kum Memory Point number 1 round to add some foliage to the tree. He uses the belly of the little brush to do this. The brush and the paint mix are fairly dry, so he can get the effect of loose leaves hanging on the tree by gently rubbing the belly of the brush on the paper. He grounds the tree in the foreground by adding some shadows.
Harry feels that the ridge line in the middle was too dark and prominent, so he wets it slightly with a brush and then dabs out some of the paint. This creates some nice dark and light patches on the ridge, which helps to create interest. He adds a few more tiny trees to the left to lead the viewer's eye into the painting. The zigzag form of the ridge line also helps to guide your view. This kind of painting is quick and easy to do because it does not have a lot of detail but it still allows you to play around with the colors on your palette. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Would you please be so kind and press like and comment on this video. Also please subscribe if you haven't already. It would help us a lot. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you soon. Vaya con Dios.